Keep fighting match. until no matches. All right, match one. Match two. <laughs> match three. Four. I'm about space. Five. <laughs> Research estimates that one in every four individuals will remain single their entire adult life. Yet, in this vast sea of singles, conglomerates like the Match Group, who are the powerhouse behind Tinder, and more, reel in billions every year. Historically, men are more likely to hand over their dollars and time to access a pool of singletons. Yet, regardless of whether you swipe through the free version or invest in a premium membership, it seems like the odds are never in your favor. We're about to delve into real-time data, dissect complex algorithms, unveil surprising experiments, and ultimately expose whether the dating game has a winning formula, or are we just pawns on a digital chessboard that is being manipulated by the unseen algorithm. This, this man's, okay? General profile, you know, good-looking dude. Okay, let's go here. 62 likes and what? Five matches? I right. <laughs> now we have... <laughs> Felicia, who's a fool. <laughs> First time. <laughs> but in all seriousness, these guys might be onto something. The numbers don't seem to be right, do they? What if I told you that these puzzling numbers could simply reflect where you live? That's right, the place you call home could be the hidden player in your dating game. The headline is that it's much easier and simpler to date outside of the Western world. Are you kidding me, man? What, are you kidding me? You're kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. Are you kidding me? Now, let's skim the surface and talk about your pretty face. I'm sure you are a solid 8 out of 10, but for argument's sake, let's say in your city you score a 3 out of 10 on the attractiveness scale. Now, transport yourself to the heart of Asia and there you go. You find yourself scaling up to a 6 or even a 7 if a guy's pale skin and geeky glasses might have earned him the title of a nerd back home, but they have transformed him into the embodiment of hotness in certain Asian corners. Recently, we asked you guys, are traditional family values declining in the West? A whopping 97% of you said yes. There are many reasons behind this, but a lot of Western men and Asian women have this mutual value. So this again is another reason why dating can be much more successful in Asia. From previous videos, we found that a lot of Western women don't seem to be happy that it's much easier for men to date in Asia. In fact, they often criticize women by saying they just need to get out of poverty. But is this the reason? No, it's not. They're going after these women who are very young, very vulnerable, very naive, usually in poor families, and they're essentially buying these women from their families. To buy a wife out of poverty and bring her back here to essentially be your housekeeper. Oh boy. Anyways, let's leave Asia behind for the moment and get back on track. Jumping into the dating tales, it's clear that the search for the perfect match is a common theme in the Western dating scene. And you know what? Men too are on the lookout for Miss Perfect. We all know it. However, women seem to have a much bigger checklist. Dreaming of a knight in shining armor who comes with the triple Bs, a big house, a big bank account, and a big now, aiming high isn't a crime, but there's a fine line where it morphs into chasing an illusion. Profile picture. I surprisingly got so many hot guys matching me. Like, I'm not even kidding. There were guys that I was waiting to send me a like when I had, like, the pretty pictures, like, the pretty profile. Like, I literally want to show you so bad, but I can't. I'll show you what picture he liked of me, though. He, he liked the first one. He liked this one. Now let me tell you a secret. A few months back, we were planning to launch our own dating app. We had it all planned out, but we changed our mind for reasons we will share at the end. But the good news is, we can share the data we found so that you can see the numbers for yourself. In one survey, a whopping 75% of monthly Tinder users in the US were males, and on Bumble, men outnumbered women 3 to 1. Also, 41% of male users shelled out for premium services. Clearly, men were more likely to go premium. While not the entire picture, this hints at why many women rack up over 100 likes daily, while the average Joe might not snag a match all week. Additionally, over half the women felt swamped by messages. This transitions us to another important reason why men get fewer matches on dating apps. The imbalance of matches is not a new concept. In fact, men have been finding dating apps biased for many years. 
This resulted in some gentlemen playing the numbers game. Long before the dating algorithm took its complex form, one only needed to download a third-party app in order to swipe right on dozens of people. Alternatively, you could create a contraption that would swipe right for you. This bad boy would be used to score you more dates than a calendar. But it's an open secret. The numbers game is still alive. For some gentlemen, if she's sporting a regular look, it's a left swipe. But add some zest a naughty pose, and there you go boys, it's a right swipe. We all know it happens, but it's a stark contrast to the female swipe strategy. Ladies tend to take their time on the apps. They look at the man's profile before swiping right. After all, they know that 99% of the time, if they swipe right, it's going to be a match. Let's imagine dating apps as an equal playground, a 50-50 split. Yet, with these tactics, the algorithms are tailored more to the female strategy. This often unfolds into a scene where a woman reels in over 100 likes in mere hours, while a guy might snag a like every few days, if fortune smiles his way. The ongoing cycle this creates is that for many men, they become more desperate and at times self-esteem is lowered. Thus, they have a higher need for validation, often resulting in more swipes. On the opposite end of the spectrum, the ladies are bombarded by likes, matches, and messages. They often do not see all their matches as potential matches are so far back in the queue that it becomes a challenge just to keep up. First photo, it's just kind of odd. Your legs are like spread open. Um, I would recommend a different photo and also not a mirror selfie. You're more likely, again, I'm just telling you this from personal experience, you are likely to get more swipes if you have a photo of you that's not a selfie or a mirror photo. So 95% of the time. The match count for men on dating apps doesn't point fingers at the man himself. Yet, there's this modest slice, a wee 5%, where the man holds the reins. And to keep the scales even, it's only fair to shine a light on it. Many female users read profiles before swiping right or left, but this is only if they are interested. In other words, the photos are the first barrier men must get through. I'm going to keep it real here. Your attractiveness is the key factor that will result in your success but you are not competing against sevens or eights. No, no, you are competing with Chad, who is a 10 out of 10. And there are about 1,000 Chads that have already swiped right on this lady. But all is not lost. We know attractiveness is subjective, so the best thing we can do is to upload the best photo we can and pray to the Tinder gods. This includes the best resolutions, the best lighting, well-fitted clothes, and no photos of you looking pissed off or like you're going to shit yourself. Highlight your features, show the ladies what your lifestyle is like, get someone else to take the photo, and be natural. Photos are key, but a small element at play is a well-designed profile. A good profile won't turn a no into a yes, however. A good profile will turn a maybe into a yes. Women often leave their profiles bare or make it vague. Why is this? Well, upon research, we found women are likely to feel less safe on dating apps, which may explain why some profiles have very limited information. The thing is, the ladies have the balls in their hands. Excuse me. I mean, the ladies have the balls in their court, so they often leave profiles bare without any consequences. Men doing the same may seriously limit their matches. Now I'm sure you have heard all the tips under the rainbow about how you can get more matches, so I'm not going to bore you with the details but I'll run through the bullet points of spending the last two days watching dating advice channels on YouTube. They are as follows. Have one amazing photo such as being in a suit or at the beach if you are ripped. Always smile in your photo. Never smile in your photo. Have something unique in your profile. Keep it exciting. Keep it cool. Don't try so hard. Have at least six photos. Never have more than three photos. Confused. Yes, so was I. The question is, what are you looking for? Are you looking for matches or to meet someone? To be honest, it can be really easy to get matches. Let's not forget, COVID-19 was on Tinder and had a lot of matches. But if these matches don't translate to meeting up, then what's the point? Just try not to be negative. You may hate the crazy wokeness that is going around or the stupid government decisions. I'm right there by your side, completely, but it doesn't do you any favors on the dating apps. I remember reading that a few years ago for men, if you were to match with 1,000 women, only three or four of them would end up in a real life date. I'm not sure how true this is, but the point stands that matching is only the first challenge. But I want to show you a clip of something quite alarming. This poor guy had a really difficult time with loneliness. He ended up spending $8,000 on dating coaches. 
Uh, I spent $8,000 on seven uh, personal dating coaches. So I had uh, seven different dating coaches, like basically how it was ran. They were like, um, they were like weekly uh, Skype training. And this is a more serious problem. Dating can take you down a rabbit hole of self-help, paying for coaching programs, mentoring with pickup artists, and so on. Dating apps can be used as a handy tool, but when they become a replacement for real-life dating or when you spend a shit ton of money to be a dating master, something is not right. There are many traps in our modern world and dating is no exception. Don't end up in a place where you are giving this more priority and focus than it deserves. I'll be telling you what you could do instead at the end which is much healthier. Research came out earlier this year that highlights a general bias issue within dating app algorithms. Sociologists explain that black women, Asian men, and black men are often less desired, which can influence algorithmic behavior over time. So is this what is happening at the moment with the rise of no matches for men? Is this simply down to a biased algorithm? Throughout the years, there's been much talk about the algorithms of Tinder, Bumble, and other apps. Things have evolved significantly from a few years ago. Let's face it, unless we're part of the development team, the algorithm's inner workings remain a mystery. Yet, some individuals on social media have unveiled the modern algorithm's secrets. The alleged revelations include, excessive right swipes will lower your ranking. If a higher number of people swipe left on you, your rankings will plummet. The two points above apply to males, while the reverse is true for females. Frequent app usage will enhance your profile visibility on most apps. Deleting and starting again will boost you to a broader audience. Most of these secret algorithm hacks have been called bullshit and most are not really secrets at all. Tinder, like many other tech companies, doesn't publicly disclose the exact frequency of its algorithm updates. However, it's common for dating apps and other online platforms to continuously tweak and update their algorithms. If a leak did appear, it would likely be addressed quickly. One argument is that the single men demographic is the primary revenue stream for most dating apps. Thus, it wouldn't be logical for an algorithm to heighten the hurdles for men, as this could drive away the highest paying demographic from the platform. Nevertheless, given the tendency among many men to play the numbers game, coupled with the inherently unfavorable odds, the algorithm is compelled to factor in user engagement. But having said this, we don't believe for a second these algorithms are 100% designed to generate matches. They are designed to keep you hooked and to generate more money. Maybe showing you fewer matches is the best way to achieve this. This might explain why Insights by Stanford Business reveals a little algorithmic nudge can actually increase matches by 30%. Another study found they could increase match rates by 20 to 45%. So, it's clear as day that these algorithms are not playing Cupid as their main gig. Experiment 1 comes from our favorite YouTuber who recently embarked on a unique Tinder experiment. He, a 26-year-old man, pitted his profile against his grandmother to compare their experiences on the app. All right, let's see how many likes did you get now? 1016 likes, bro. Boom. Oh my god, bro. How is this possible, man? Even he is surprised. <laughs> Pretty amazing, right? Huh? What about Rattle? How many likes do you think I got? Zero. <laughs> the second experiment is from Wheat Waffles. This dude is well above average, and yet 96% of ladies were not interested. What the hell is going on? He has better than average points in every category. Yet despite this, 96.3% of women out there did not match with this guy. Playing With Fire is another great channel that often does dating experiments. In this video, he created a profile of a guy who is good looking but has a lot of red flags. The result? He got matches and a lot of ladies who were interested. The fourth experiment was done by Real Talk, and this was to see if a pretty boy would be more successful than a muscle macho guy. The demographic was younger women from 18 years to 28 years. The pretty boy received 30 matches and the macho guy managed to get a total of six matches at the end of the experiment. The fifth and final experiment is by whatever. Two beautiful people, the same age and location. The results? Well, they really do speak for themselves, but surely these bad experiences are only for free users. If you are willing to hand over your hard-earned money, you can jump the queue, right? Well, yes and no. There does seem to be a genuine visibility boost with many dating apps. It appears that looks still matter the most. 
Even if you don't pay, you will be more successful on the apps if you are attractive. Many matches for ladies can lead to a feeling of validation, and let's be real, a lot of users use dating apps simply to feel validated. On the opposite end of the spectrum, a lot of men who felt quite confident before end up with low self-esteem and a lack of confidence. But aside from the negative feelings of dating apps, some users have reported that they have become addicted. Addiction to dating or chasing women is not a new idea, but apps and technology in general are highly addictive. If you think about it, when someone gets addicted to naughty movies, they prefer to just enjoy themselves and the video. The same is true with dating apps. The more you use them, the less and less you will be interested in speaking to women in your daily life, but choosing the easy way has its problems. Be honest with yourself. How do dating apps make you feel? Do you feel confident and valued, or do you feel desperate? So earlier on, I said, I was going to tell you two things. Number one was why we didn't proceed with the dating business idea. The second was what you could do instead of dating apps. The reason we didn't continue is simply because we believe most business models like this do more harm than good. Secondly, instead of using apps, the best thing you can do for yourself is to attract. The simple truth is that the best way to find a girlfriend, a partner, or whatever it is you are looking for is to create a life for yourself and become that man you want to be in the future. Become a motivational speaker, apply to be a gym instructor, or even do something random like learn to speak French. Yes, you are right, these have nothing to do with dating, but they put you in places and give you qualities that will attract women to you. This doesn't mean you don't go over, talk, and make your move. You will still need to act when the time is right, but you are instead creating opportunities for your life instead of hoping the algorithm will do this for you. Unless you are planning to be swiping outside of the Western world, dating apps are not your best option. There is a lot of data we found that we didn't have time to cover in today's video, but we found a lot of information to suggest that most matches don't go anywhere and that a lot of ladies are not interested in meeting in real life and are instead using it for other reasons. Your time is so valuable, so it only makes sense we look at the returns on time invested. Is it giving you the yields you expect?